This video is an introduction to Vesper theory. Vesper theory is a set of rules that we can use to look at a two-dimensional Lewis structure of a molecule and figure out what the molecule would look like in three dimensions, like this. Because molecules are like actually things in real life, so they'd have three-dimensional structures that are often more complex than we can draw in two dimensions here. So, let's start, take a look at some Lewis structures, and figure out what the 3D shapes of those molecules would be. Here's our first example, beryllium dichloride. We've got a beryllium atom, it's a central atom, surrounded by chlorines on either side. Note that beryllium here is an exception to the octet rule, which means that it's happy to have fewer than eight electrons in its valence shell. When beryllium is making two bonds, like it does here with chlorine, it has only four electrons in its valence shell, and it's perfectly happy with that. So just keep it in mind, but it doesn't have any important bearing on what the Vesper shape is. So, a little bit about the Vesper rules here. Vesper stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion, which is a really fancy way of saying that electrons or pairs of electrons want to push away from each other and want to be as far away as possible from each other. And that kind of makes sense because electrons have negative charges, so opposite charges repel, and obviously these things are going to want to be far away from each other. Let's look at what bearing this has on the three-dimensional shape of a molecule. So in beryllium here, where are these valence shell electrons that want to push away from each other? Well, the valence shell electrons are in these bonds. I've often said that you can think about covalent bonds as if they're hands from the atoms with electron pairs, and that these hands are connected because they're both holding on. They're both sharing this pair of electrons. So we could draw beryllium dichloride like this where we have a hand from the beryllium, a hand from the chlorine coming together to hold, to share this pair of electrons. So this just reinforces the idea that there is a pair of electrons in each one of these bonds that's shared between the atoms. Okay, so as we said from Vesper, these electrons want to be as far away from each other as possible. They want to repel. So, how is this going to influence the 3D shape of this molecule? How can these bonds arrange each other in, or arrange themselves in 3D so that they are as far away from each other as possible? The three-dimensional shape of beryllium dichloride is going to look like this. We've got a beryllium here in the middle, and then we have these two chlorines on either side, and all three atoms form a line. They're all in a row here, a straight row. We call this a linear molecule, which means line, so that kind of makes sense. And let's look at the angles here. The angles between these two bonds are going to be 180 degrees. So 180 degrees between these two bonds is how the electrons that are in these two bonds it's how they can be as far away from each other as possible. So we can say that this linear shape that we have here is the way that two things are going to surround themselves around a central atom. A central atom is here, and we've got these two things that are two bonds, and the two bonds are as far from each other as possible in this linear shape. Now, in beryllium dichloride, I'm talking about single bonds here. But it actually doesn't matter whether we've got double bonds or triple bonds. For example, CO2 has a shape like this, where there's a double bond here and a double bond here. But there are electrons in both of these bonds. And so each one of these double bonds, they just count as a bond. So for CO2, I still consider it as just two things around a central atom. So CO2, it's going to have this linear shape here too. This will be the carbon, and these will be the two oxygens they'll be 180 degrees apart. So double bonds, don't worry. It's just two things, one, two, around a central atom. Okay? Just to drive this point home, 
Triple bonds, it's the same thing. Got a triple bond here, a single bond here. I just consider this to be two things around a central atom. One, two, so HCN is gonna have this linear shape as well with these two, ang these two bonds being 180 degrees apart. So we always get a linear molecule, 180 degrees, whenever we have just two things surrounding a central atom. Now let's take a look at some molecules where we have three things that are surrounding a central atom. Here in BF3, I have a central atom surrounded by three bonds to other atoms. And in this case, boron, like beryllium before, is an exception to the octet rule. Here, boron, when it's making three bonds, has six valence electrons. It's totally happy with that. So, as I said earlier, when we were talking about beryllium, is that we can think about these bonds between the boron and the fluorine here as hands that are sharing an electron pair. And the electron pairs in each one of these bonds push against each other and they want to be far away. So when we have three things, the electron pairs in these three bonds, how do we arrange these so that they are as far away from each other as possible in 3D? The molecule is going to look like this. I'm going to have these three atoms, one, two, three, surrounding a central atom. And I'm going to get the shape called trigonal planar. The trigonal comes from the fact that there are three, one, two, three things. That's just what trigonal means. And planar, because take a look at this. These atoms are all arranged in this plane, all right? They're all in a straight plane here. Now, what are the angles between the atoms in a trigonal planar shape? They are all 120 degrees. So the angle between here and here is 120, here and here, and here and here. So that is what BF3 would look like in three dimensions. Now, just as before, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about double bonds, single bonds, triple bonds, it's all the same, okay? So in CH2O here, I have three things surrounding the central atom. I got a double bond, a single bond, and a single bond, but it's still just three things that want to be as far from each other as possible. So that means that CH2O here is going to have the th same shape in three dimensions as BF3 does. It's going to be a trigonal planar molecule with 180 degrees between each pair of bonds. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some molecules that have three things around them, okay? But these three things are not all bonds. Here's an example of this. SO2, okay? It's got three things around this central atom. It's got a bond here, that's one thing. A double bond here, that's two things. But then it's got this unshared electron pair up here. These three things all have electrons in them, so they all want to push away from each other. So what shape is SO2 going to have in three dimensions? If you think it's linear and the three of these atoms are all lined up in a row, that's not right because you're not taking this unshared electron pair into account. To figure out the shape of this, let's go back to this trigonal planar molecule, okay? In this trigonal planar molecule, we had three things around a central atom. It's just they were all other atoms, okay? So this is how you arrange three things around a central atom to be far away from each other. Now, in SO2, we're going to get a shape that's very similar, except it's that one of these atoms from the trigonal planar shape is going to have been replaced by an unshared electron pair. But otherwise, look at how similar they are, okay? It's atom, 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 atom. It's just this atom here has been replaced by this unshared electron pair. But these atoms are still in the same place because this unshared electron pair pushes the atoms away from each other, just like this atom did, okay? So they're based on the same shape, three things around a central atom. It's just one of these from the trigonal planar shape has been replaced by an unshared electron pair, okay? So this molecule here, we call this a bent molecule because instead of being in a straight line, 
the atoms are arranged in this kind of bent shape. Looks like someone just grabbed it and bent it like that. So what are the angles going to look like in the bent molecule? Well, in the trigonal planar molecule over here, when you have three atoms, the angles between any two bonds were 120 degrees. In the bent molecule, though, it turns out that this unshared electron pair here pushes harder against these two atoms than the atom up here would. Okay? And so that means that the angle between these two bonds is going to be a little bit less than 120 because the atoms are getting pushed closer together. It's going to be less than 120. It's going to be more like about 116 degrees between the two of these. Just once again, because this unshared electron pair is pushing harder than this atom. So instead of 120, they're pushed harder, pushed closer together, and it's more like 116. But here's the point. We get the bent molecule when one of these three atoms from the trigonal planar is replaced by a lone electron pair. So always keep your eye on these lone electron pairs because they have a very significant impact on the shape that a molecule is going to end up having. Now let's move on to some molecules that have four things around the central atom. CH4 here has four things around a central atom and they are all bonds to other atoms. So each of these bonds contain a pair of shared electrons and that means that the bonds all want to push against each other and be as far from each other as possible. This molecule, CH4, is going to have this shape in three dimensions. Okay? This is called a tetrahedral shape and it's how you arrange four bonds as far away from each other in 3D as possible. Okay? Tetrahedral. And in the tetrahedral molecule, there are 109.5 degrees between any two bonds that are next to each other in this molecule. So 109.5 here, 109.5, and so on. So four things, four things around a central atom. You get a tetrahedral shape with 109.5 degrees between each bond. Now NH3 here also has four things around a central atom, but not all of them are bonds to other atoms. Okay, so we have one, two, three bonds, and then a fourth thing that's a lone electron pair. So what's its shape going to look like in three dimensions? I'm going to go back to this tetrahedral shape for just a minute because this is how we arrange four things around a central atom when they're all other atoms. Okay? But in this shape, they're not all other atoms, okay? So NH3 is going to end up having this shape, which is called a trigonal pyramidal shape. Look at how similar it is to the tetrahedral shape, okay? I'm sort of showing them on their sides here. It's just that the atom that was up here when we had four atoms around the central atom has been replaced by an unshared electron pair here, okay? So got three atoms. Three atoms are the same between this and this, and it's just this atom has been replaced by an unshared electron pair. So this has a shape that we call trigonal pyramidal, and we call it trigonal pyramidal because if you look at it from its side, it kind of looks like a pyramid. Okay, got these three atoms pointing down. All right. Now, for angles in, the, I don't know quite where to put this, so I'll kind of put it up here, I guess. For atoms in the trigonal pyramidal, for angles in the trigonal pyramidal molecule, we'll remember that in the tetrahedral we have 109.5 degrees between all of the bonds. But in a trigonal pyramidal, just like we saw with the bent molecule, the unshared electron pair here pushes a little harder against these two bonds than an atom would. And so that means that the angle between these bonds is pushed a little tighter, and so it's smaller than 109.5. For a trigonal pyramidal molecule, like NH3, the bond angle is more like 107 degrees, a little less than 109.5 degrees. So four things, if you have four things around a central atom, but three of them are bonds and one of them is a lone electron pair, you end up with a shape that's called trigonal pyramidal that looks like this. Okay, one more example 
and then we're done with, done with the Vesper video. Here's the last molecule we're going to look at, water, H2O. Okay? This thing has four things around a central atom. Two of them are bonds, one, two, and two of them are lone electron pairs, one, two. So what's its 3D shape going to look like? How can we arrange these four things as far away from each other as possible in three dimensions? As before, I'm going to look back at my tetrahedral molecule, which shows how I arrange four atoms or four bonds as far away from each other as possible in 3D. For H2O, though, only two of the four things are bonds. The other two are lone electron pairs. Okay, So that means that I'm going to end up with a shape like this. Okay, I've got my two atoms down here, hydrogen and hydrogen, but then I've got my two lone electron pairs up here. Look at how this is similar to the tetrahedral molecule if I look at them from the side. Okay, it's got, I've got atom, atom, and atom, and atom. Okay, it's just these two atoms from the tetrahedral molecule have been replaced by these two lone electron pairs from the water molecule, these unshared electron pairs on the oxygen here. Okay, so look at that from the top, how they have very similar structures. It's just these two are missing and they've been replaced by the lone electron pairs. We say that this molecule has a bent shape because these, these atoms here are not in a straight line, but they're bent like this. Now, what are, what are the angles here? Let's look at the tetrahedral again, which had 109.5. Then in the trigonal pyramidal, when we had one electron pair, it pushed the bonds a little bit closer together, so we had about 107 degrees between them, a little less than 109.5. Now when we have bent, instead of one unshared electron pair, like in the trigonal planar, I have two lone electron pairs. And so the combination of those two is going to push the atoms even a little bit closer. So in a bent molecule like water, the angle between them is going to be 105 degrees, about 105 degrees, which is less than 107, which is less than 109.5. So the more unshared electron pairs you add, the tighter the two or more atoms get pushed together. Okay? So if you've got two bonds and two lone electron pairs around a central atom, you're going to have this bent shape. Now there's just one thing that I want to say about this bent shape, okay? There are two ways that we can get a molecule with a bent shape, but they're different, okay? We can get a bent shape when we have three things around a central atom, and one of them is an unshared electron pair. Then we get something like SO2 where we have something that's a little less than 120 degrees between these. Another way to get a bent shape is when we have four things around a central atom, but two of them are lone electron pairs. And in that case, because we have four things, everything's a little tighter, we have an angle of 105 degrees that's a little less than 109.5. So you just finished watching this Vesper video. Where should you go from here? Well, the first thing that it's important to know is that there's a difference between watching the video and actually being able to look at a Lewis structure and figure out what the 3D shape of that molecule would be. So the first video that you should watch is this Vesper practice problems video where we'll go through a whole bunch of Lewis structures and go through the steps to figure out what the three-dimensional shapes will be. So that's definitely the next thing you should watch. Now, there are some common mistakes that students often make when they're learning Vesper. So I made a video on that. It's called Vesper Common Mistakes. Watch that after you've done the practice problems to make sure that you're not falling into any of the common traps that tend to trip people up when they're learning Vesper. Now, maybe this is all of the stuff that you have to learn for Vesper. And this is everything up to molecules that have four things around a central atom. But, depending on what you have to know, you might have to know molecules where there are five things like this around the central atom, or where there are six things like this around a central atom. So I made some other videos on this sort of stuff. Okay? I made the video, a video on the trigonal bipyramidal family, which are all of the molecules that have five things around a central atom. And then there's another video on the octahedral family, which 
are the molecules that all have six things around a central atom. And now finally, after you've watched the video on the trigonal bipyramidal and the octahedral, you can do the Vesper practice problems uh, for these advanced structures where you'll, where you'll go over the, uh, the molecule shapes that I talk about in this video in this video. So this, uh, this, might look a lot, this might look like a lot, but if you go through it, it should really give you a solid foundation with this three-dimensional Vesper stuff.